Hello lovely, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and today we're going to be talking about Joan Crawford and her tips for living a fabulous life. And a lot of these tips are from her book that was written in the 1970s, My Way of Life. So let's jump right in and talk about some of her tips. Also make sure you check out my other Joan Crawford videos. But now I'm going to focus on her sometimes interesting and sometimes wild tips for living a fabulous life. So Joan Crawford loved to keep her house clean, but it was more than just having a clean house that she enjoyed. The actual process of her cleaning her house brought her so much. And according to Joan, when she was in between projects or sitting at a desk all day, she had a lot of energy to spare. That's when she would break out her scrubs and brushes and get on her hands and knees and make the floor shine. She said that it would make her cheeks rosy and then she would just have a ball with it. And in terms of making her marriage last, she said that the best thing a woman could do was listen to her husband, talk about his work. Even if he thought he had nothing interesting to say, it was a wife's job to pull it out of him. If he had a mundane job, even in, let's say, a grocery store, ask him if he had any interesting customers come across his belt that day. Obviously, this advice is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. I probably wouldn't even take any of this, and it's more like comical, especially it was a different time in the 1970s, so I would say take this as a grain of salt. I just thought it was interesting to see um, the different advice she gave, and Joan Crawford was married four times, although who's to say any of their divorces were actually her fault? She also made special notes to other women as a bit of a helping hand. She suggested that a woman go spend one day with her husband at the office and watch all the people that come in to talk to him. Specifically, she said to look at how many beautiful women come in and out. Then she said they wouldn't take it for granted that their husbands were with them. The woman would learn to appreciate and take better care of their husbands. This advice is obviously so outdated for numerous reasons, but especially because it makes it seem like all women revolve around men instead of having their own emotions and interests, but I guess this was a different generation like I said before, but it's interesting to kind of take a trip back in time and kind of see what type of advice she was giving. I assume that the other reason she expected the woman to be grateful is that she believed marriage is the most interesting thing to happen to a woman. I find this interesting coming from her because she was a working actress and seemed to be quite active and almost a workaholic in many ways. And as for Joan's party advice, I am going to let you hear it in her own words because it's interesting to say the least. And Joan says the best parties are a wild mixture. Take some corporation presidents, add a few lovely young actresses, a bearded painter, a professional jockey, your visiting friends from Brussels, a politician, a hairdresser, and a professor for physics, toss them all together and try to get them to stop talking long enough to eat. And Joan says it's important to have all the age groups, of course. She says, I wouldn't want to have hippies come crawling in with unwashed feet, but all the younger people I know are bright and attractive and have something to say. They also dress like human beings, according to Joan, as a secondary piece of advice. She also suggested that you add a splash of vodka to everything. Because the guests won't be able to taste the vodka and it will make everything all that more fun. So basically she's saying secretly spike the drink so no one knows they're actually getting drunk. Another party related tip is planning out your menu based on the color of your food. According to Joan, once everything is plated, the colors need to Compliment each other or your guests will not eat. Specifically, two white food should never touch because that is the ultimate faux pas. She also notes that red and yellow vegetables do not look right next to each other. I personally think this is insane. Honestly, I guess maybe I don't entertain that much, but I never even thought about color coordinating my food, but I guess there could be something to that. I go more in terms of the flavors complementing each other. And speaking of food, Joan had a surprisingly strong opinion on brunch. She believed that the word was invented by lazy Americans that couldn't be bothered to get up on time for breakfast. And she believed the origins to be French midnight dinner and similar to the breakfast you would find in a country English house. I personally love eating brunch, especially on the weekends. I think it's nice to sleep in and not get up early, especially on Sundays, and have a nice brunch, so I don't know, maybe Joan's being a little bit picky there, but Joan was particularly proud of her workout routine and its benefits. And now moving on to Joan Crawford's workout routine, and she was very proud of her workout routine and its benefits. 
Her workouts consisted almost entirely of swimming and dancing. This gave her a strong chest, according to Joan, so strong and defined, in fact, that she didn't have to use a bra to hold up her breasts. That's what she said. She let on a few of her screen appearances that no one knew she was wearing a bra. Even though she didn't find a bra necessary, she did pack over 27 suitcases when going to film in London. Her reasoning was that she needed different outfit options for each scene, which is totally understandable, I guess, but it does seem like a lot of suitcases. And I guess it depends also how long she was there filming. She would pick out what she thought her character might wear in that scene and she would present the options to her director. I find this interesting because I feel like nowadays, I'm not sure if the lead actors have that much say in what they wear. I know with background acting, because I do it on a regular basis, we usually bring like five options and show the costume people in the movie and they usually choose some. So I found that interesting that Joan did that. And then the director would make the final decision. Maybe Joan was just really picky with her wardrobe when she didn't want to wear one specifically made by the costume department. And another reason why Joan wanted to bring all of her clothes is she considered her clothing to be her friend and she didn't want to leave them hung in her closet unworn and cold. She had to bring them out, show them off and wear them. She also had very strict rules when it came to adding to her closet, likely because she loved each piece of clothing in there first she said if you were ever in doubt about an item don't buy it chances are if you are unsure about it at the store then you will never actually wear it when you take it home her second piece of advice is never buy a dress unless you have all the accessories to wear with it and if you don't have any matching accessories then you better have the money to buy them when you buy the dress this includes a matching hat even if you have to custom order one joan says lastly go to the mirror in the store walk 20 feet away and turn back to the mirror now walk towards it slowly if you like what you see all the way up and down and buy it if not then you don't want it i mean in the scheme of things i feel like this is pretty good advice i have personally bought like random tops or skirts hoping that I can create a full outfit and then I end up never finding something that goes with it. So I do like the idea of, you know, walking farther away from the mirror, except I feel like with change rooms now, you're kind of crammed in there. And I personally like to bring my stuff home so I can try it on and to see if I can find accessories that I have. I find it impossible to make my decision in the store, but that's just me. I like to actually go home and try it on with my out like other outfits and then sleep on it. So I don't know. That's why sometimes I do like shopping online too. Joan also had a very strong opinions about body image in general and how women should examine themselves. And Joan recommended that you get dressed up in an outfit and have a friend grab a camera. And then she suggested have a mini photo shoot from all angles up high, down low, every angle possible, then print out all of the photos, but not with the standard size photo paper. She says, blow it up and put it on an eight by 10 sheet. And she says, the next step is the most important one. Sit down with the photos and really analyze them. According to Joan, you're not going to like what you see and that will show you what you need to improve on. I mean, this seems pretty extreme, but I mean, I guess if you're an actor or actress, I mean, you are quite critical of how you're gonna look, but this seems insane and probably would just lead to a negative body image of yourself. But I guess nowadays with social media and our iPhones, we're constantly able to take photos of ourselves to see what we look like. And she had a little bit more of a milder advice when it comes to taking care of your body and skin. And for starters, she would always bring around tubes of rose water and glycerin to use after she washed her hands. And she rubbed this into her hands like you would with lotion, making sure to always go all the way up to her elbows. And Joan noted that most people don't take care of their elbows because they don't see them. And I do agree. I actually tend to forget about my elbows too, but I've kind of just been starting to notice them more. And when I do moisturize my arms, I try to make note of that. However, other people do see if you have a dry elbow, according to Joan, so she felt it was very important to take good care of her elbows. Joan shared two secrets for her great skin. Joan strongly believed that moisturizer was the greatest invention of the past 20 years, and she says, I find it hard to imagine a world without moisturizer, something I rely on every day. And her second tip is a little less conventional, but certainly not unheard of. In Joan Crawford's own words, she said that she would have sex to clear her complexion, even though she would rather do it for love. 
And another piece of advice that she had that was a little more controversial was her opinion on makeup's ability to cover up. Joan Crawford wasn't talking about covering up blemishes, rather she was referring to a disagreeable expression. In her words, saying a no made you look like a prune. And I know Joan Crawford was quite critical of herself and she did have an intense beauty routine. I think she probably even used frownies um, to help with wrinkles. And I know she chewed gum to help tone her jawline. And when it came to traveling, Joan thought it'd be best to learn one gracious phrase the host's language or dialect of the country you're visiting. I do kind of like this advice as well. I feel like nowadays too, there's so many apps you can use for learning different languages for traveling. And Joan also mentioned when she was traveling and she did this, she received gifts from grateful people that she encountered. At one point, she was given a wild cat to take home while she was in Brazil. For obvious reasons, she had to decline this, but she said she was still honored. Most likely people probably gave her these gifts because she was obviously super famous at the time. So maybe it was a combination of the two, but I have a feeling I'm leaning towards that she was just a famous actress. And speaking of travel, at one point Joan came down with a cold. Her solution was to fly to Jamaica to recover. Within two days she felt completely better and she attributed it to the sun and salt water. I mean, I feel like if I were to do that, just flying on the plane would probably stress me out and make me feel sick. And if I went there, I'd probably have to go a lot longer than two days because by the time I recovered, just traveling home would drain me again. But I mean, I guess to each their own. And if you can afford and have the luxury to do that, then why not? And the last one I'm going to cover revolves around her children and her belief that they inherit your taste subconsciously. And this was according to Joan. And Joan says, I discovered that I must have instilled a few of the social graces in the children when I let the twins take charge of their own ninth birthday party aboard the Andrea Doria. They invited the whole of the first class and decided on the menu by themselves. There was vodka and caviar, a clear soup, a New York cut steak with a large selection of vegetables, a salad, and cheese trays accompanied with good red wine. And finally, there was a tremendous birthday cake for all the guests and expensive champagne. I didn't suggest a bit of it to them. It was entirely their own menu. And this seems kind of interesting. I know there's so many allegations against Joan Crawford when it comes to her children, especially her daughter, Christina, who wrote a book about her. Make sure you check out my other video mummy dearest and noted that all of her children were adopted so genetically they wouldn't necessarily have inherited certain traits but i guess she could pass down her words of wisdom so it was really interesting reading about all of joan crawford's tips obviously most of them are outdated and it's more for fun and kind of tongue-in-cheek just to kind of see what she suggested because most of them are pretty crazy but um I'm a fan of Joan Crawford and I think she's an incredible actress so if you want a fun read I would definitely recommend picking up her book My Way of Life. Alright, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!